using those kind of traits and that kind of data to influence what they buy instead? Um, I, I wouldn't, I think, you know, compares, comparing sort of Cambridge Analytica to, um, you know, studying um, how people wear clothes is a, is a bit, is a, it's a bit apples and oranges. Um, what I what I would say is that you know there are um, ethical and responsible ways of using research and using data. Um, you know, data is a tool, and you know if you think about all kinds of tools, whether it's a car or even something like a knife, right? A, a chef's knife can make a Michelin star meal. Uh, it could also be a, a weapon of murder. Um, so it's sort of the, the intention and how it's used, um, I think is sort of an important aspect there. Um, but, you know, when I look at the, the projects that I work on um, at H&M, um, to be a more inclusive company and to be a more inclusive and have more inclusive products. So using, um, using data and using research to better understand, for example, um, how does culture interplay with what people want and whether or not we're being responsive to that? You know, fashion has long had a problem with, you know, frankly, Eurocentrism and, you know, we have a much wider market. Um, so how can we better serve and be more inclusive to uh, those, those more diverse markets? But also things like, um, you know, size inclusivity. You know, fashion hasn't, um, I think, really spent a lot of time looking at um, the fact that there is a wide sort of breadth of different shapes and sizes of people around the world. And our jobs is to adorn those bodies in fabric. And so if we don't have a good understanding of those shapes and sizes and how people are, then we aren't doing our job. So I think, you know, people, I think rightfully are skeptical of, many different applications of data and AI, but there are genuinely positive impacts that you can have if you apply data in a way where you are trying to um, amplify a person's agency or give them more choices rather than necessarily leading them down a path that you want for them. Um, so I think in that sense, um, you know, I feel much more comfortable working on projects like that uh, than you know, perhaps in the in the in the political arena or or, or or other arenas. Cool. So, kind of an argument there that there's that use of data for social good as well as for the economic good of the company. Can you sort of walk through an example of what you're doing in your current role? I think your title is director of research, isn't it? Pretty broad. Yeah. Now, what data are you collecting or analysing or picking up on? What are the outcomes that you're trying to get from them? Well, I think, you know, right now with, for example, um, coronavirus probably being the most um, salient issue, not just commercially, but also socially and just in every sort of angle you look at, coronavirus is there. Um, so, you know, looking at, for example, what is the, what is the impact that, um, you know, both the pandemic and the lockdown has had on our customers, but also young people in general. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I think is quite cool about H&M, um, in particular with our new CEO, is really trying to have a more contextual understanding of our role in people's lives, that we can't separate, for example, um, the generational, uh, equity aspects to th this pandemic or the gender equity aspects of this pandemic and the recovery of certain sectors um, like fashion. Uh, you know, our customers are predominantly younger and they're more female. Um, and these are the kinds of people who are going to be more vulnerable and more impacted um, by this pandemic. And so, you know, trying to better understand what are the broader dynamics at play, not just in terms of our marketing or you know, our product lineup, but also what are the important social dynamics at play that may impact how we need to behave or react as a responsible company. Um, so 
the, the, the types of work that I'm sort of focusing on right now is really trying to understand how is this, how is this pandemic going to, to impact young people and, and in particular young women? Say sort of a huge recession coming after several months of people not having anything to dress up for and possibly a long time more before big gatherings. Yeah. Is there a risk that if we have been making steps forward in trying to sort ethical supply chains, transparency, trying to think about some of the social implications of fashion, is there a risk that we sort of lose all of that at the moment because the industry is going to be in a drive for survival? Um, there is, I, I think that there, there is a risk. Um, I, I, I'm happy that I work for a brand that has committed to pay um, you know, for all of its orders and it's not backing out just because of, uh, you know, the pandemic. I think we were one of the first brands to, to say that we'll honor our word and we'll honor our, 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 our contracts. Um, but I, I agree that there, there is a risk of, I think, companies um, losing focus. Um, frankly, I don't think there's been enough focus in pre-pandemic times towards, you know, um, the, the industry in general looking at, um, you know, whether it's labor standards uh, or, you know, enhancing our sustainability credentials. Um, but one of the things that I think may come out of this is particularly when you look at younger consumers, so Gen Z, um, this is probably a generationally defining moment for Gen Z, when people t sort of talk about what is Gen Z, well, I think Gen Z is the generation that emerges from a pandemic um, and really comes of age. And when you look at, you know, what's happened in these young people's lives before the pandemic, growing up with, you know, the election of Donald Trump or with Brexit or with political turmoil, whether you're in Eastern Europe or in Brazil, and that, when young people, you know, oftentimes people in marketing will talk about brand authenticity and all of that. But one of the things that at least I've noticed is that when you have younger consumers wanting business to take a lead and taking action on important social issues, it's because the traditional political or social leaders that previous generations may have looked for, looked to for leadership, um, currently are... Uh, you know, Donald Trump and, and, and others who, um, you know, a lot of younger people don't trust and don't support. And so what that means is that there is more responsibility going to be placed on the private sector and on large businesses to, to stand up and fill some of that role. Um, and so I think re responsive businesses um, should pick up on that and understand that you know, your future consumers are going to be thinking very differently than perhaps your generation has about commerce and, and, and consumption. Thank you very much. Across the